uh, YQL because uh, the whole thing was based on SQL like language, right? Right. Um, so, so we've seen um, some other technologies like uh, Facebook query languages is one that's very popular. It spawned up around the same time. Uh, where they were leveraging off of data internally to their services and giving it a very easy, easy way for users to interact with their social data. Um, in much, much the same way, we want, we uh, at the same time, we're trying to provide uh, a way for people to leverage off of all of the Yahoo APIs as well as external data feeds and external APIs, and basically just open up the entire web in this very uniform way so that people can leverage off of data from any different source that they want. How lang why was SQL like language? Why not some other thing like I don't know JavaScript based language like for example we have a should be along and stuff. Right. So um SQL is very uh, very easy to, to work with. So most of the people that are in any sort of programming environment, they're familiar with the language, and it's very easy to pick up. It's it's uh, provided the exact type of syntax that we wanted because we wanted to provide database-like functionality where you can insert, update, delete, and fetch records. Uh, so it just had a natural natural draw towards something that's like SQL. You know, we may have a lot of people that may not like it, but when they look at the language, they can start programming in five minutes, and that's what we want. Yeah, plus the bigger audience right now is still programmers who is using SQL. Yeah. No matter how no SQL can really get in the world, yeah, still better than SQL. So. And then we have to, we do have the YUI JavaScript library that has built-in YQL support, so if you want to work through the JavaScript layer, it's it's already there for you. So there is support in YUI library already for YQL? Yeah, absolutely. So in YUI, there's a, a built-in YQL method, and that allows you to make uh, cross-domain queries to the YQL service and get the data that you want. Is it something that they implemented for this gallery thing? It started through the gallery, and then uh, it was so popular that it got integrated back into the, um, the full spec. So we do have a lot of work going on with Node.js. Uh, some of our mobile development platforms are, are utilizing it. Uh, Reed Burke gave a talk on it yesterday, so the YUI team is, is definitely um, up to speed on the server-side JavaScript components. And uh, most, of, most of our colleagues take a personal interest in it because JavaScript has the most popular programming language. Uh, it just lends itself very well for, for the service like development environment because it's skills that everyone already has. Why are you not providing any uh, own development environment, some Yahoo Studio, you know, something where you can code like uh, why you is web based? So um, Yahoo is basically just a, a web company and we wanted to provide these easy layers for developers. While we do have things like the YQL sandbox that allows people to manipulate YQL queries on the fly, um, we didn't want to build heavyweight components. We want to provide these, these lightweight layers so that users can work in whatever environment they choose to and just utilize our APIs however they, they see fit. But it's still going to be much easier if you're going to have some development environment where you can type things, you're going to have syntax highlight, have intelligence, mm -hmm. debugging, login, and stuff like that. But, uh, when it's everything on the web browser, it's kind of complicated because you have a little text box where you type the whole thing and after you click in debug or whatever, you will start using a huge URL string and you don't know what to do with it. Right, so uh, we, uh, I mean, tools like, like a uh, um, why you island themselves very well to do plugging efforts. So if you are working with any of our web services, YUI has um, amazing debugging tools. So we leverage off of those quite often for for displaying errors and, and for um, really handling those error states so that you can you know, control program flow. Um, so we tend to use our own tools to just develop these types of flows. Um, but at the same time, we just want to provide, uh, as I mentioned, the, just the web APIs, the standard web APIs, so that people can use our data as they need to as if it's seen fit. And where we might we might not have to spend a lot of effort towards these environment, development environments that, that people can, can use. We just uh, make sure that the web APIs are solid, that the data provided is, is up and, and correct. And uh, that's our main focus. For me, it was seen that uh, Yahoo put enough effort into actually promoting, especially YQ. Because when YQ 
my color just appeared and instantly struck me like this freaking awesome thing because I can do much of the join different uh, data sources and off and I'm gonna have my feet and I can use my feet. In my own project I'm using as well right now that we collect data for weather, data about related to AP statistics, who's connected to Sony, not only Sony. And uh, I know what's going on is this particular unit that was connected to our application. But for some reason I don't see this uh, aggressive uh, way of promoting things like for example Google Maps. Then whatever they, they create and they try to push it hard even if it's a complete failure next month. Right. Still they're trying hard. Why Yahoo still doing it? So Yahoo uh, has definitely more of a media focus than, than Google. Um, but we do have this wonderful technology stack. Um, so I mean, you saw that between YQL, most of the hackers here are, are implementing YQL and YQL and a lot of our backbone technologies. Um, we try, try to lend ourselves well to uh, doing these, these uh, hack events to promote our technologies, but you're absolutely correct. We don't aggressively pull um, the community about our technologies. We try to let the technology speak for themselves and allow them to flow naturally into the uh, into the development communities. The, the people that have discovered our technologies and everything that we do with them um, have grown to, to really love the services, especially YQL, um, because it, it's, it's definitely a saving race for a lot of people um, in our normal jobs if you're developing code. You know, a lot of the, the work that you would normally do it is is just removed by, by this, this simple YQL layer. Uh, you, you don't have to do your screen scraping, you know, your web APIs, you don't have to leverage off of multiple APIs, download all the source yourself, find ways of matching it up, and not to mention all the documentation. Um, so, I mean, um, we do have the great services. Um, Correct. We don't push the community as as much as some other companies may, um, but we try to uh, try to let the technology speak for themselves. So I think you need to put some little effort also on educating people about these new technologies. Uh, there is a huge amount of developers that are still thinking that everything is possible to download on their computer and deploy the same way without using uh, sources like looking at CDNs or something. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm removing my because so far it is in YQL is somewhere else in the They get it freaked out and they do like, what if Yahoo down? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And uh, this is the main thing for, for business application because when you come in and begin to rise it, and I'm dealing with some of them, this is a ma major concern. They, they're not sure it's a good approach for them because they want to have full control on the source code want to have full control on how things executed. And when they see this gazillion of connections to um, Yahoo services, for example, they get it out. It's not there. The system administrator cannot do things. And that is a, a, a very traditional way of thinking about um, development practices. Uh, most people will want uh, local installations of uh, basically everything that they're working on because they have complete control over it. I think with the new cloud service technology movement, we're seeing a, a fundamental change in how we do business and uh, how um, a lot of people develop. So one of the things that we contribute back to, back to the open source community around cloud platform technologies is our Hadoop installation. Um, so um, we've contributed back uh, that to the Apache project. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one of the ways that we contribute back to the, to the community and really try to drive our open standards um, and show people that, that this is really the way that, that businesses are starting to run now, um, where they don't have complete control over the source code, but they maintain some sort of guaranteed uptime from, from the services. YQL, for instance, has a very high level of uptime. It's the service is guaranteed, I believe, at 99% uptime. Um, the specifics on that are definitely on the YQL documentation site if, if my numbers are off. Um, but um, services overall... So basically it's unlikely to see YQL service going down. Especially it's like secure. Right, so especially with these distributed um, cloud technologies, because you have all these redundant servers. So if a, a particular server bank goes down, uh, or you know, computers go down in, in the server bank, you can just replace them very easily. Uh, and then the processes are handled by 
um, by other distributed computing networks. Yeah. So it's um, it's very easy to have all these redundant backups so that the service maintains a higher degree of uptime. Right. Uh, you've been mentioning yesterday uh, this data tables and so on. Something where people it's like user computer kind of beautiful content. Right? How this thing works? How we pushing their metadata into so the way that it generally works is uh, we have a basic XML configuration file. Think of this like a wrapper on top of the web service. So you'll have a, a URL or a series of URLs to the API endpoints on a service that you want to wrap. Um, and then you would insert those into the XML configuration file with the keys that you want to be able to search on. Uh, you might implement some server-side JavaScript layer, which is called our execute layer. That can manipulate the data from web service to um, mash up with the additional data sources before they're returned back to the user. Um, but So the user would create these, this XML configuration. And they would upload it either to their servers or to our community GitHub uh, account at github.com slash yql slash yql dash tables. Mm -hmm. And then we, uh, if they do upload to our GitHub account, we um, push them into our community tables. And, that, and then they become a part of the overall um, web services that are available through the, through the system. I think there's over 1,100 different tables of data that you can pull, pull from currently in YQL. That's is there somehow cached or something? Uh, so we do have some caching mechanisms within YQL, um, so that so that responses are actually very quick to to um, go back to the users. Uh, but if the user so chooses, they can disable the caching mechanism through uh, debugging mode on top of the mm -hmm. YQL console. Uh, so that's one way that, that the user can get fresh results as they need. This is that five minute interval that you've been mentioning yesterday. Right, so, so, so you have a, depending on, on the structure, depending on what how you set, uh, set up the, um, the actual caching mechanism, um, by default you might get uh, several minutes of, of, uh, of caching going on mm -hmm. for certain tables. Uh, you can disable this by setting debug equals true in the URL uh, URL query. So when you're making a query to, to the uh, Yahoo service, if you add in as a query string parameter debug equals true, that'll disable the cache and mechanism. The presence of their data table connected there, if it's still there, or it's going to find, not to provide the table that already did, for example. Right. Is there any check? Uh, so right now, the, the checks are very manual. We do, uh, so a lot of the work is crowdsourced by uh, people utilizing the tables. Uh, they will, when, when there are, are issues with any of the tables or the services have changed and we have not had the opportunity or do not know that they've changed, uh, we have a strong developer community who manipulates the tables and contributes back the changes to us in the exact same way that they contribute new tables. Um, we don't have a mechanism in place right now to, to uh, check every single table of data, uh, so there is an opportunity where, where a table might go down if a service, uh, service is, is changed. Um, but frequently those, those tables are, uh, are brought back up very quickly. So there is nothing like you know floating for a long time and just disappearing. Definitely not. No, um, anyone uh, can download the community data tables to their own GitHub repository. They can manipulate the table if they see that it's broken, and then uh, issue a pull request back to the root project so that we can pull in the changes. Then we frequently bring uh, bring in the changes into the community tables within a 48 hour period. So, um, and if there's a severe, severe downtime, if, if people are acting, are very much requesting the service go back up, we can increase that. We can, we definitely work on a case by case basis. And if people need the service up, then uh, we we're happy to oblige. Nice, very good. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you. Yeah.